Uh, so I am Mimi. I'm a contributing writer for Popcorn and Tequila, which is an entertainment blog. And my first question is, so we live in a society that celebrates older men dating younger women. Um, but when older women date younger men, like the world comes undone. What inspired you to write the story this way? I think precisely because I knew the world <laughs> comes undone. Um, because I've seen so, because so often in our culture, we see this representation. Um, there's this double standard that is totally fine for men to of a certain age to date younger women and no one bats an eye. And when when the reverse is true, we the women get so much backlash. We get called names. We get berated. We are insulted. We are like, you know, questioned and challenged in ways that men just aren't. And I was kind of tired of seeing that, um, especially because I mean I I mean I've been married for a while, and so I wasn't I'm, I'm pretty happy with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't been dating younger guys, but I I'd see it with a lot with my I had friends who were getting divorced around that time, and they were like out there enjoying themselves, and many of them were dating much younger guys and just like doing things that they hadn't done in a long time, and and the kind of I wanted to bring light to that and kind of explore how we have this double standard and we just, we do not hold men to the same um, ideals, I guess, that we we hold women. And I really wanted to kind of speak about that and explore it in a way that was um, honest, but also tantalizing, so. You, you definitely did an excellent job. Thank uh, you. It, it definitely, as a woman, it made me feel a certain way, even though I'm, I'm also happily married, but just because I know that it happens and it's just one of those things that are unfair. Yes. Uh, one more question and then I'll let the next person go. So with books being so extremely detailed mm -hmm. uh, in story, how did you decide kind of like how to trim the fat, if you will, for a movie? So I was not involved at all in the movie making. So that all that- okay trimming was on someone else is on the writers or director and producer the producer um so i i i can't i can't speak to that okay. um but i but but i am super aware that it's two completely different media and, and they don't translate 100 mm -hmm. percent going to lose some you're going to lose a lot and so you kind of pick and choose what you think is a most compelling story that'll appeal to the widest audience and uh and i believe that's what they went with I think so too. I enjoyed it, but it definitely made me uh, download the book on Audible because now I'm curious. You have to, yes. And if you, uh, and I narrate the Audible, by the way, I don't know if you started I saw, it. I started it already. So I, I highly recommend it. You can, you can hear <laughs> okay, all my thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Who's next? Hi, Robin. I'm Jana from Whiskey and Sunshine. Hi, so Jana. I read in, um, article that you had uh, done an interview uh, back in, I think it was Vogue in 2020. And you talked a little bit about how the novel was loosely inspired by like Harry Styles with One Direction, a little bit of like an Eddie Redmayne, uh, your real life husband, but that it wasn't like a fan fiction piece per se. Can you talk a little bit about the inspiration of the story as a whole? Um, you know, I wanted to write a story about a woman coming into her own and reclaiming her sexuality, redefining herself, thinking, out, moving outside of the box, moving, moving outside of the boxes that she'd been put in. And I, I liked the idea of her doing it with a guy that was much younger and um, desirable. And I kind of, it all just kind of came together at once. I, and I mean, sorry, I should, I should preface by saying that I'd, I was, I'd been joking with my husband about running off and leaving him and the kids for a, a young guy in a band. And he, and he said, you're crazy, but that would make a great book. And so he, I mean, he really laid it out for me. He's like, what if you have a woman and she, a mom and she's divorced and she's about 40 and she's got a young daughter who's obsessed with the boy band and somehow they meet the band and she ends up having a relationship with one of the guys in the band. And as he said it, it was just like, it was the most brilliant thing I'd ever heard. And I knew that not only would I enjoy writing it, but I could do a really good job. I'd, um, I, uh, 
when I was much younger, I was still in college, I start, started a company with a girlfriend of mine and we were managing singing groups. And one of we got one of the members of New Kids on the Block to produce our, our group. And so I got, and they were still kind of like at the height of their fame. And so I got to witness that kind of mania and hysteria that surrounded them. And then like having to live in a bubble and just not being able to, you know, like the things we take for granted, like walking down the street or going to the supermarket or going to the movie theaters. And I remember going to the movie theaters, a couple of them, and we had to arrive late and we had to leave early. And I'm, I'm an actor, right? So I, and a producer. And so I, I'm the person that likes to sit to the last, the last credit. Like I'm reading everyone, like, who do I know? It's like, oh my God, I can't believe, I worked with that grip. Or like, I, I, I like to see who's out there working. Um, but this was like, it was like during the denouement, like I, I wouldn't even say what movie it was. So it was a long time ago. It was like one of the Lethal Weapons movies. But like, I was like, well, we're leaving now? We can't like, it's like, you've got to like, get out, get out. I mean, it was really, it's really kind of weird. And so like when their lives are just not normal, like the thought, like this is before, I guess, before Netflix. <laughs> God. So before even like you're watching movies, at all, I guess Blockbuster was around. But then I thought, gosh, have you, when was the last time you sat in a theater and got there on time? And then got to see the end. Like that's just gone for you. And, and you, you, like little things like that would kind of jump out at me. And, and so I, I really, I knew that I could portray this kind of insular life of a guy in a boy band at the height of his, of his celebrity and and do it well. And then I'd, I'd, always, I'd been obsessed with Duran Duran when I was really young and I'd written Duran Duran fan fiction. And so I was comfortable writing in British voices and writing for like band members, like, not feuding, but like, you know, drama, inter, inter-band drama. Um, and I uh, I hadn't done it in years, but I thought, sure, that that's in my my re- wheelhouse. I can I can access it if I need to. And um, so that's how the book came to be. But I'm sorry, I just wanted to say more importantly, and most importantly, that it's I really wanted to tell this a woman's story. Like it's 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 not about the story, the book's not about Hayes Campbell. It's Selene's story. And yes. that to me was the most important part. Like the Hayes part was kind of like the icing to be able to create this character that women find desirable and that she was able to lose herself in. But it was it was more, it was much more um, grounded to me than that. If that makes any sense. So. It does. It's a great story. I, I loved it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, Robin. I'm Ashley from with Ashley and Co. Uh, So you were just talking about, you know, you're an actress, you're a producer, you have, you wear all the hats. How was this process for you being on the other side of the camera, but it's not someone else's story coming to life. It's your story coming to life. It's very bizarre. I'm so, I'm, I'm so used to it, you know, being in the actor and you're, you're helping, you're part of an ensemble and you're in your, you're one of many moving parts and you're, and you realize it's all, uh, you're there for like, to help improve someone else's story, to help some, tell someone else's story. And you want to do the best you can at that. Um, and to be kind of removed from that and, but have it being your story that's told it, it's, it's very surreal. And I, like, I, as I said, I, I don't know if I said it here, I've been, I've done a bunch of interviews. I was not involved at all in the film, in the, in the, in the, filming. So I wasn't on set. I don't know what discussions were had. Um, but it's, it's, uh, it, it's very strange to see like people breathe life into your characters and some ways how you picture it in some ways, not at all how you pictured it, but like making it their own. And, and it's, I mean, that's what happens when you, when you have a film, like when you, when you're adapting a story, like things are going to change, people are going to change, characters are going to change. Some characters disappear. Some are added, um, and it's uh, it's very interesting to see someone else's vision of your baby. Well, I think it's awesome, and I'm so excited for you because your debut novel it killed it, and now it's going to kill it as a movie. So, thank yeah. you, thank you so much, Ashley. Thank you. Hi, my name's Robin Davis from MomTheMagnificent.com. Shout out to my fellow Robin. I love how you spell your name. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Um, could you share a little bit about the writing process for this book? And did you know the ending when you started out? Um, 
yes, I knew the ending from the very beginning. I knew, um, I knew it wasn't going to work out. I knew that I was going to give them too many challenges and, and put up too many roadblocks that it, it, what, they weren't going to see it through. And I knew that she was going to end it. And I knew that he was going to come groveling back. And I knew that she was going to turn him away. <laughs> so I, I knew I, from the beginning, it just, it, it all, because I wanted to feel realistic, right? I, I, mm -hmm. I didn't want to write this kind of like fairy tale, you know, ride off on into the sunset on the back of a horse kind of novel. I wanted to feel like a very real story. And I wanted to feel as if you're reading a woman's journal, like she's, re or she's, re she's reading her journal to you. And like, this is what happened. This was one situation in my life, one year in my life. It completely upended everything I knew and thought and believed in, but I wouldn't change it for the world because it, I grew out of it and it gave me something and it changed me. And so that's what I wanted for her. And so I knew, I knew exactly where I was going with it. Um, but the book, this book for me was very much a, it was like an obsession. I, when I, when I, got the idea when my husband came up with the idea and I and I started writing it like it was almost immediately I think it was we had that conversation March 29th 2014 and I started writing and I workshopped the first chapter in my writing group April 29th 2014 wow. somewhere around there. um wow. and then I never I I'd spent six years working on a book before that I could not sell. And I didn't want to spend another six years working on something that no one was going to buy. So I was like, okay, I've got a limited amount of time. I'm just going to, I'm going to rush through this and get it done. And it also felt very timely to me because of the way I was portraying um, his privacy and her exposure and the internet and like, and fans reaching out. And so I, you know, Twitter was a thing and Facebook was a thing and Instagram was a thing, but like Snapchat didn't exist then and like TikTok didn't exist. So it was like, I want, I knew that because I was putting in modern technology, it had to feel modern by the time I was trying to sell it and it was going to hit the stance. So I was rushing and I was never more than um, three months behind current time. So the book starts in April of 2014 and I was never more than three months behind that. And so I finished the my first like real draft in July of 2015 like it and then I spent a couple of months polishing it and then October 2015 I sent it out to an agent and the first agent I sent it to loved it and he gave me notes and then I spent three months doing his notes and then two weeks after that we sold it like it went so quickly but when I say like I was obsessed like I took my laptop everywhere and I had two little wow. kids at the time, and so I would take them to like um like gymnastics lessons or like or like water polo practice or like soccer. Like I'm, and I was, or I'd sit in my car while they were at appointments. And I would like, I was writing everywhere. Although like I wrote on Christmas day, I wrote on Thanksgiving. Like I was up to two in the morning, most nights. And it was an obsession. Like it wasn't just that I had to get out on the page, but these characters were so real for me. They were living in my head and I was hearing their voices constantly. So for a full 15 months to 18 months of my life, there were like three people living in my brain. And I really thought I was losing my mind. Like I felt like I was going, you can ask my friends, like I felt like I was going crazy because I would hear his voice, I'd hear her voice. And then somewhere in there, I'd have my own thoughts. And sometimes they would like overlap and and I and I would cry a lot because I felt like I'm, I'm, this is what it means like to go crazy as a writer. And maybe I should see a therapist, like something's totally wrong. Like maybe this is like, like the first stages of schizophrenia. But I, but I didn't want to because I was afraid that she would fix me and that would mean I would lose their voices. And so I was like, I can't, I don't want to see it in her or anyone until I'm done writing. And because what if I can't get them back? And what if I can't finish the story? So, so I didn't and I finished the book and, uh, and I just kind of waited it out and waited for the voices to dissipate. And eventually they, they went, I can still... I can access them from time to time, but they're not, they're not living there. They don't, they don't have permission. They have to like rent a room or something like that. Well, that's so powerful. Thank you for sharing. I think that definitely translates to the readers who start the book and then can't put it down. They just want to finish it. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thanks, Robin. Oh, hi. Um, hi. I'm Tremi, and I'm from um, an Emerald City Life. It's nice to meet you, Robin. Um, to meet you as well. 
I really, really like, oh, I wasn't too sure what I was going to think of, like all the different stories involved. And then I was reading that part where Amara is talking to Solen and she's saying like, I want to evolve because I evolve. Um, I don't want other people to choose uh, what happens for me. And I'm, you know, in my 40s too. And I felt like it wasn't just talking to a friend. It's like you're talking to us as 40 year old women, like for self-definition. Yeah. Well, I, I want it to be very honest and reflective of everything I was going through in my 40s and feeling like I was running out of time. Like, is this, is that it? Like, are my best years behind me? Am I no longer attractive? Or like, you know, every, all the little things you worry about, like my boobs aren't perky anymore. Like I've had two kids, like what, what happens now? <laughs> like all of that stuff in my skin, like in my eyes, like I look at now, like I can find out, like, I think there's a filter on this, but I, you know, I see all the things that are happening. I'm at the age now that all my, not all my friends, but a couple of my friends are starting to get like their eyelids done. And so now I'm thinking like, I don't have to worry about that. Like, is that the next thing that's going to go? And we have so much on us as women anyway, <laughs> to put on this extra layer of like you're getting older and you are not as valuable or desirable like adding that into motherhood and being a spouse and trying to have a career and and also having like aging parents like there's just a lot there's a lot on us and I kind of wanted to give voice to that and explore that and and let women know that like we're all going through it we're all in it in different ways and different stages at different points. But it, I mean, I feel like, especially as I get older, I'm, I, I'm more aware of how, how quickly time goes and how brief our time is here. And I look at these teenagers and 20 years, I was like, I was that like just the other day and they have no idea that they're going to be here sometime. Like, and they're, they can't even see it. They can't even imagine that they're going to be looking, they're going to be looking at 20 year olds and be like, oh, I was like that. But you can't tell them anything because they know everything, right? And yeah. I've, I've got a 15 year old daughter. So she she knows everything now. But um, yeah, my boys are 15 as well. Yeah, so like you really hit it. Like we don't have a lot of um, literature or things for us 40 year old, like in our you know 40s and 50s that is right. beautiful and makes us feel beautiful like this. I want and to make us feel beautiful and desirable and sexy and whole. But I also wanted to like, I wanted to make it a, a, like a, a titillating story, like something that's going to pull you in and you're going to appreciate it, but then you're, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to like the adventure and the escapism, but you're going to read a little bit deeper and realize all the commentary that's there and like all the different layers. And I think that was important because I, I don't see that so much. Either you're reading like, you know, Camille Paglia, like you're reading like something really, really dense or you're reading lighthearted comedy or romance or something that's not dealing with the kind of not the uglier side but the more realistic side of as aging as women and when I say aging I, I don't mean like aging but I mean like you know being a more mature woman not being in your 20s or even 30s anymore I love the vulnerability I loved it was brilliant and I appreciated it so much so thank you, thank you so much Jeremy thank you Hi, Robin. I am Kami from the Mama Diaries. So nice Hi. to meet you. Lovely to meet you as well. So I, I, read like book. <laughs> I, um, I read the book a few years ago and I loved it. So, you know, when I heard the movie about the movie, I was an, an absolute, I had to see this movie. Um, so the romance between Solan and Hayes, it's obviously the main focus of this story. I personally, I found their relationship to just be so intoxicating. You know, I was immediately drawn in to them, you know, rooting for them. What is it about them that you think makes them so compelling? You know, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> because I, I'm, I'm actually really, I'm still floored when I hear from readers and how touched they are and how moved they are. Like I, feel like I just kind of bared my soul and there's a lot of me in Selene and Hayes is like my perfect guy so there's a lot of my husband there's a lot of former boyfriends like the best of them you know and then and then a, you know a couple of celebrities that people I like don't know and like you know other like influences that not necessarily people I know, not just celebrities, but like I, I meant to make him posh. Like I have this idea of like what the posh, the perfect posh British guy is. And so I, I put in layers of that. And and I think I just got his voice really well. And, and her voice was so clear to me. And I think their interactions 
whether it's like witty repartee or just like deeper conversation feel very real. And I think that's what draws readers in because they're, I think they come off the page because they sound like real people, if that makes sense. Um, I don't, I don't know that there was some kind of magic trick. I just think I was trying to be as honest as I possibly could. I had a relationship with a guy who was 20 um, when I was like 25. So he was at that point, even my friends were like, what are you doing? He's a baby. He's still, he can't even drink. Like, and I was like, oh, come on. <laughs> like, But um, I got a lot of like, yeah, like a lot of like blowback from my friends. And, but I, wrote every moment of that relationship in a journal. And so when I was writing this book, I would just go back to the journal and be like, what was he saying? Like what, at 20, what was he good at in bed? What was he not good at? Or like, what was he like, how, like, how capable was he of, of like understanding emotion and feeling and like, like how much could he could admit? How much could he not like, cause he was very mature to me at the time. And even going back to looking like, God, this, this guy was really mature. And so I thought that's totally believable. Hayes can be this mature. Like I get a lot people like oh my god you could never be that way and it's like well I dated him so <laughs> there's a lot that that I I borrowed from so I think it just made it I think it's just making them real and just trying to be as honest and not like this kind of fluffy idea of what a celebrity is or what a guy in a boy band is but making them real like and even like with my time with the new kids like I knew at least a couple of them like real you know what I mean and so I, I it's not just this kind of guy in a poster it becomes much more than that and so i think that was that's the secret is just just like kind of peeling back the layers and making sure you you have it all in there and you know your characters inside out that makes sense i plan on rereading the book i've seen the movie already love it and no oh, i reread do thank you Hi, I'm Christina with thepatricios.com, and I'm I'm interested in knowing how you chose the title for the book and if it had and if there's like a significance to it. So, uh, yes, I um, I had a, a working title that I wasn't sure about, but I but I used it for most of the writing of the book. It was called Unfolded. Um, I don't know if you read the book, but there's yeah. a so she. He, he likens to his discovery of her as like unfolding a flower. And by the end of the book, when they're they're like, she's, she's breaking up with him and he's completely distraught. And, and I'm getting like goosebumps. <laughs> I'm trying to remember the scene. And, and he's like, what? Oh God. She's like, how did we get here? Like, there because she's so much more in love with him than she ever signed up for, and he's the same way. Like, she thought this was just going to be a tryst, and he says, "You let me unfold you," which is like, it was like she bared her soul to him in a way, and um, so that was like, to me, that was that was the 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 thing that that stayed throughout, and like I liked that title, and I wanted to keep it, but my agent was like, it's too quiet, you need something that's going to stand out a little bit more, not so subtle, whatever. And I come up with a bunch of things and he's like, no, that's too rom-com or that's too like chick lit or that's too vague or that's been done too many times. And I was like, <laughs> every time I like, I'd, I'd go back and I'd, I'd find things and finally it's like, okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go and reread the book and see if there are words in the book that resonate. And it wasn't until, I mean, she says the idea of you comes up a couple of times in the book, but it wasn't until the last time she says it, which is when in the, like the second to last page of the book, when she's trying to push him away and, and he was like, you love me. You said you love me. And she says, maybe it's not you. Maybe it was the idea of you. And when I saw that, I was like, that's it. That's the book. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Thank you. I'd also love to know what do you have coming up next? Can you share with um, us? I, I've just finished writing, I didn't say I finished, I finished my, uh, a decent draft of my next book and I'm doing rewrites on it, edits on it now. And hopefully that'll be done and sold and in a bookstore near you, I don't know, within a year. I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea how long it's going to take. Um, but <laughs> the faster I write, that probably will help. <laughs> um, so uh, we'll see. We'll see. I, uh, that's what's next. And then I'm working on some other projects. I'm trying to work on a TV show, writing a, a TV series. Um, 
and another, I've got another film idea, screenplay idea. So I'm, I'm doing that and then I, and I act in between still. So that's, that's what I'm doing. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Christina. Thanks so much.